I know it really doesn't look like it, but I just woke up. <laughs> I know a lot of you guys have been very patiently waiting for part two of my lipstick declutter, and I promise you it is still coming. And I know that this is like, maybe the meanest thing I can do to you because I'm doing a declutter today, but it's not gonna be that one. And I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a very impulsive person. And once I get it in my head that I wanna do something, I need to do it right then and there. And so I opened up my foundation drawer today and was shocked and also appalled by how messy it was. And I pretty much knew right then and there that I had to declutter it. So before I get into the collection, I need to expose myself and show you the before, which is horrifying to see because it's so, messy. <laughs> I actually think I may try to get rid of like 80% of what you see here because I just don't think it's necessary to have more. I'm at the point right now where I know exactly what I like in my foundations. Foundations are so personal to each person depending on your skin type and just, you know, what you like. So I do have those foundations that I just constantly go back to that I know work for me. And I think those are going to be the only ones that I'm going to keep all of the other ones like the ones that I just know don't really work so well for my skin type, I am going to be giving away to friends and family. Okay, let's get right into it. All right, so here is the before of the first basket. So starting off first with the newest foundation in my collection, this is the Milani Screen Queen Natural Finish Foundation. I actually tried this for the first time yesterday on Instagram Live and I loved it. To be honest, I really didn't know what to expect with this guy because I hadn't really heard anybody talk about it at that point. Not to be dramatic, but this pretty much has everything that I want in a foundation. It's natural looking, it's hydrating, and it has about a light to medium coverage. It looks so seamless on the skin. Like when I put it on, it really didn't even look like I was wearing a product. It really just looked like my skin was smoothed over and kind of flawless looking. And I really just loved everything about it. And I actually found it to be fairly similar to the Shiseido Synchro Skin, which is my current go-to favorite foundation that I've been using. Obviously this is a drugstore product. So I think this is actually a really good drugstore alternative to that product. I find it really gives a very, very similar effect. So clearly I'm going to be keeping this. I really love it and I can't wait to continue using it. This is a collection of some higher end foundations that I'm going to be getting rid of. So I have two Natasha Denona foundations, the Transfer Matte and the Foundation X Plus, and then two of the Dior Backstage. So starting off with the Dior Backstage, I actually had very high expectations for these because I thought that they would be comparable to the MAC Face and Body, but unfortunately they were not. Um, I love MAC Face and Body because it's super hydrating, it's lightweight, it's buildable, and this has a very, very similar consistency. Even the packaging is very similar, so that's why I thought that they would kind of be in the same realm. Unfortunately, they're not. It's kind of like the complete opposite. Even though this foundation does have quite like a thin, serum-y, watery texture, it actually dries down to be a pretty matte finish, and unfortunately, I found that this broke up on my skin horribly like it looked really really good for the first maybe like 20 minutes 30 minutes of wear but after that it started to kind of break up in all of the drier areas of my face so i just feel like this may not be such a good option for people with a drier skin type at least it just didn't work for me as for these student attached to denona foundations the transfer matte was kind of just a nightmare for me it was so chalky so matte it looked so bad on my skin it really just made my skin look 10 times older than it is so definitely not dry skin friendly and then as for the Foundation X Plus, this is actually a product that I quite like. I believe I even mentioned it as one of my favorite full coverage foundations, and I still do like this product. I have other full coverage foundations that I do prefer over this guy. Since trying this, I've tried a lot of other foundations that I kind of just have found some, some deeper love in. And like I said, I am trying to condense my collection as much as possible, so I'm trying to be a little bit picky here. Two more foundations that I'm gonna be getting rid of. These are from Benefit. It's the Hello Happy. Uh, flawless brightening foundation. These also just just didn't work for my skin I found it looked very very heavy and chalky again. Just not for me So gonna be putting these in the no pile So these are the skin tints that I have in this bin skin tints are like one step below tinted moisturizers or light coverage foundations They're barely their foundations essentially. I do like skin tints on, on specific occasions, like for day to day, if I don't want anything too crazy, if I kind of just want to throw something on and I don't want to, you know, go out in the world completely bare faced, then I'll throw on a skin tint. So they definitely do have a place in my collection, but I don't like all of these. So starting off first with the ones that I don't like, we have the um, First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Tint Moisturizer. I was so excited about this because I am such a big fan of the First Aid Beauty Concealer. So just because I really like that other complexion product that First Aid Beauty has, I thought that this would also be great. It was horrible, you guys. Please look at this. 
What color is that? This is the shade Light, which is much closer to a more like medium shade, and it is so orange and peach. Like, what? The shade range in this lineup just really is not great. I cannot wear this, so I'm good to be getting rid of it. Next, I have this Kiehl's BB Cream with SPF 50. I do wanna make a little side note just to say that even if your foundation does have SPF, you still should wear SPF underneath um, just to be sure that you're getting enough because normally, I mean, with just a foundation, you're not gonna get enough protection there. So that's just a little side note. This is a product that I actually really used to love quite a bit in the summertime. This is what it looks like on the skin. It actually has really nice coverage to it and I always like the finish of it. However, unfortunately I am gonna have to get rid of it because I've had this in my collection for at least four years. So it is definitely expired, which is kind of gross. So I'm going to get rid of this. Will I be repurchasing it though? Probably not, but it was still a really nice product that I really did enjoy. The Pixi H2O Skin Tint is actually a really cool product. When you blend it out into your skin, it actually feels like water. Very hard to explain, but it's a very interesting texture, very unlike anything else that I've that I've really tried or that I have in my collection. Um, this is a very hydrating product. It gives such a nice finish to the skin, and I do actually really like this, um, so I am going to be keeping it. I think it, again, is a really great, just kind of easy to throw on foundation that I don't have to think too much about that actually makes my skin look nice and hydrated, so I'm going to be keeping this guy. The Glossier Skin Tint is a product that I kind of have had a lot Love hate relationship with. I used to really like this and then I kind of started not liking it and then I started really liking it again because again, I kind of found a use for it in, in, in my day-to-day -day life. This is another product that I kind of just love to throw on in the summertime. I pretty much never reach for this in the wintertime. I think it's honestly because when I do get more tan, I find I gravitate towards more light coverage foundations because my tan tends to kind of cover up a lot of my redness. So I don't find I need to wear foundations that have such heavy coverage. And so I really do like these skin tinty products because it just covers exactly what I want to cover and the Glossier Skin Tint is another product that just does that. It's a very very watery texture. This it has way less coverage than anything I just showed you guys um, but I am actually going to keep it because like I said I do really like this just to kind of throw on when I want a little bit of something but not too too much and this is the shade uh, medium. This is a really interesting product. This is the Josie Moran instant self-adjusting foundation. So this is one of those products that pumps out white and then when you start to blend it into your skin, it turns into a foundation color that's supposed to match you perfectly. This product actually looks nice on the skin. I don't mind it, but it's just not something that I ever really reach for because I find it kind of like annoying to use. I, it has this weird gritty texture that I can never really get used to. So when you blend it into your skin, it literally feels like you're exfoliating your face, which just feels very, very odd. So even though this does give my skin a nice effect, I just don't like the application process. I do find it kind of gives my skin a little bit of a white cast because it does have that white color when you pump it out. I don't know. I just don't find it fully, fully works. Next, I have another drugstore foundation. This is the Maybelline Dream Urban Cover Full Coverage Protective Makeup. I have two shades here in 120 and 220. This product really just didn't work for me. I found it to be very thick, very chalky, very drying, very matte, just like all the things I don't like in a foundation. So I wouldn't really say this is totally uh, dry skin friendly. So I don't like this. I'm gonna be getting rid of both of these. The Estee Lauder Double Wear is definitely a cult favorite. It's known to be like a very full coverage foundation. It's definitely more on the matte side as well. So this isn't really a foundation that I like to reach for every single day at all, but I do really like this, especially for events because I find it's very long wearing. It lasts really, really well on the face. It's a foundation that's very dependable. I kind of know what I'm going to get when I wear it. Even though it is full coverage and it is more on the matte side, it never really makes me look too dry as long as I apply it correctly. With this product, a little bit definitely goes a long way. I don't like to over apply because then it can get a little bit cakey. This is also what I like to call a mixer foundation. So I actually like to mix this in with my more like light coverage, lightweight uh, foundations if I wanna boost up the coverage or if I wanna boost up the longevity of a certain foundation. It, it works really well, especially with really, really dewy products. Definitely will be keeping it. So this one is in the shade 
1W2. So this over here is the Fenty Pro Filter Hydrating Longwear Foundation. I had such high expectations before trying this out. I thought it was going to be like my new favorite hydrating foundation, but unfortunately I actually found this to be quite heavy on the skin and not very hydrating at all, especially because this color matches me so perfectly. It's one of like the best foundation color matches that I have. It's in the shade 210. And honestly, just like the feeling of being able to match your skin perfectly with a foundation is just the best. Like, look how good that just melts into the skin. And even right then and there, like, it looks so good. But as soon as it starts to kind of set and settle on the skin, it just goes in the completely other direction. It just does not work, which is so, so disappointing. So I am going to get rid of this guy. This is the Bobbi Brown Skin Longwear Weightless Foundation. When I have two shades, that's when you know I love a product. Um, this is probably one of my favorite, more full coverage foundations for the summertime. I know I'm mentioning the summertime a lot, but I do have certain foundations that I gravitate towards in the winter and some that I gravitate towards in the summer. I do really like this for the summertime because it just lasts really well. Even if I get really hot and sweaty, it doesn't break up. It doesn't get all crazy on my skin. It just stays in place. And that's what I love about it. And I also love how natural looking it is. As far as my shades, this darker one is Warm Sand 2.5 and the lighter one is neutral scent and 30 so i am going to be keeping both of these let's talk tinted moisturizer so starting off first with the it cosmetic cc cream this was my ultimate favorite foundation for years and years and years at a certain point in my life this is pretty much the only foundation that i was putting on my face because i loved it so much i had it in three shades fair light and medium depending on where my skin tone was at so it's safe to say this was definitely a favorite I haven't used it though in such a long time just because there's other foundations right now that I'm kind of gravitating towards. What I like so much about the CC cream is that it gave really good coverage, especially for a CC cream. It looks super natural looking. It was just easy to wear. It always wore beautifully, beautifully throughout the day. It wasn't heavy. It felt really nice. It was just like an all around great product and I still do really like it. I just, again, haven't used it in a while. So I am gonna be keeping these and I do kind of wanna bring it back out of my collection. This is the Natasha Denona Face Glow. I actually find this to be kind of similar to the It Cosmetics CC, but it's a lot glowier. And I don't know how much I actually like that extra bit of glowiness that, that it has. The It Cosmetics CC is already a pretty glowy foundation. This I feel like kind of is over the top. For me, I find it's kind of just too glowy to the point where it looks a little bit oily, so I am going to get rid of this guy. Then we have the Clinique Even Better Foundation. This is another tint of moisturizer that was in my like everyday rotation for a really, really long time. I still do really like this product. I do feel like the name of this product really does describe it perfectly. It's called the Even Better Foundation and it really does make your skin look like your skin, but better. It's just a really good, oops, everyday to moisturizer. So I'm definitely going to be keeping this guy. And this is in the shade 07 Vanilla. So this is a new foundation from CoverGirl. It's the Clean Fresh Skim Milk. Um, this is the shade Fair, which is way too light for me. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to keep this. I haven't yet tried this product though. I would love to know your thoughts. If you have tried this, let me know down below in the comments if I should actually pick up a shade that matches me. <laughs> So next up, I have my two Armani foundations. I have my Luminous Silk and my Maestro Glow. Starting off first with the Maestro Glow, I feel like this is a pretty underrated product. I don't feel like a lot of people talk about it, but it's such a great foundation product, especially if you do have dry skin. This is another foundation that I like to call a mixer because I do actually use this more as a mixing product than actually by itself. So as you can see in the bottle, it's a very serumy and liquidy foundation. So the oil that's in here is completely separated from the pigment. That's normal. You have to kind of shake it up in order to get everything all mixed up. Because of all of that oil that's in there, this is a very serumy, very oily type of product. So you can totally wear this all over your face if you wanted to, but it will give you a very, 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 very glowy effect, um, which is nice, but for me, I feel like sometimes it can get a little bit overboard. But look at how hydrated that just made my skin, and that's because of that oil that is in here. So this is a product that I actually like to mix in with my more matte and full coverage foundation. So even something like my Estee Lauder Double Wear, I would put in like one or two drops of this to kind of just make it a little bit more lightweight and more glowy. So this is definitely a very unique product. I don't really have anything quite like it in my collection. If you have dry skin, I think this is a great product to have. Again, kind of like as a mixer, um, it really does make a huge, huge difference when you do mix this in with those more matte foundations. 
so keeping it. This is Armani Luminous Silk. I used to be a really big fan of this. I used to wear it all the time, especially as like my event foundation. It was always my go-to for when I needed a little bit more coverage. I haven't honestly used this in a while. I feel like I probably have found other foundations that I like more than this, but I don't want to get rid of it just yet. I feel like I want to I want to try it out again. So I am going to keep this guy and I am the shade number four, by the way. So next up, I have three more, more higher end foundations. The Laura Mercier Flawless Lumiere, the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish, and the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. So I, I could tell you right away that I am going to be getting rid of the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish. Unfortunately, this was just a foundation that really just did not impress me. My expectations were pretty high with this because it is definitely a pricier product and I thought that it would be like absolutely stunning and gorgeous, but it was kind of just like, okay. It really didn't blow me out of the water. Um, so because of that, I think I'm just rather give it a better home. However, this Laura Mercier Flawless Lumiere Radiance Perfecting Foundation, the longest name ever, is such an amazing, amazing, amazing foundation. This became like my go-to event foundation. Again, it kind of just gave me that perfect finish that I always look for, which is that medium coverage, natural looking finish, and a, and a foundation that also looks hydrating. What I also really like about this is that it wears really, really well. And on top of all of that, the color matches me so well. <laughs> this is 2N1 Cashew, and it's just one of those foundations that just matches my skin perfectly, which makes me love it so much more. I mean, look at that. It's such a good match. I don't know if you could even tell on camera, but it really just melts into the skin so perfectly, which I always just really appreciate. This Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation is a full coverage foundation that I actually do really enjoy. This has so much coverage to it. It's pretty insane. Like it is very, very, very full coverage, but it is not thick in texture at all. Like it has a very, very, very thin texture. So you need such a small amount of this and you're gonna get a pretty full coverage. Even though this is a really full coverage foundation because it is so thin in texture and because you're able to get away with using such a small amount, you actually get a really lightweight effect on the skin while still keeping that coverage there, which is something that I always look for in a more full coverage foundation and this has it. So I am gonna be keeping this. So for these stick foundations, I am going to get rid of the When a Wild one and the Milk one for really no like crazy reason other than I just feel like I don't reach for them a ton and I don't feel like I need to keep them honestly. So I'm just going to put them in the no pile. However, this Bare Minerals foundation stick actually really surprised me. I do really, really like this guy. This is a pretty like dewy and hydrating foundation stick and I find it just gives such a nice finish to the skin. It makes the skin look really, really nice and glowy. So I do actually quite like this guy and I feel like I don't really use it enough. So I'm definitely gonna be keeping it and I think I may even put it in my everyday vanity so that I can remind myself to use this more. So these are the last few foundations that are in this round. So let's just quickly go through them. So this RMS Beauty Uncover Up foundation is fairly new in my life. I actually bought it to try out in one of my recent videos. I already posted it, so I'll link that down below in case you wanna check it out. But this is a really interesting foundation because I expected this to be pretty light coverage because all of the RMS Beauty products are very, very light coverage. But this was actually a very, very full coverage product and it's quite a thick cream as well. I kinda of had a bit of like a roller coaster experience with this. At, at first I didn't like it, then I did like it, and then I wasn't sure about it. So I'm still kind of on the fence with this product and I still definitely need to test it out. So I am going to keep it for further testing purposes. <laughs> This Makeup Forever Reboot Foundation is one of the newer launches for Makeup Forever. I do find it to be kind of similar to the Shiseido foundation that I love so much. So I do really like this formula and I am gonna be keeping it. The Josie Moran Vibrancy is a very, 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 very dewy foundation. This foundation almost leans to the point of being like too dewy. It is also pretty old. <laughs> I've had this in my collection for a couple years now. I should not keep it any longer, so I think I'm gonna get rid of it because of that. And then this over here is an RCMA foundation palette. This is a really good product. RCMA is more so geared towards, I think, like professional makeup artists, and I actually used the RCMA foundations quite a bit when I was working as a freelance makeup artist. These are really good foundations. I find them to be very versatile. They work well with both oily and a drier skin type. The RCMA foundations are also highly pigmented, more pigmented than I would say like your typical cream foundation. So you really only need like 
like a tiny, tiny little amount in order to cover your entire face. So you're able to get away with a little bit of product and it's going to go a long way, which is always gonna give you a more like natural lightweight look. And that's why I really love these so much. I feel like I don't use them enough. So I am going to be keeping them. All right, so these are all the foundations that I'm gonna be keeping from this bin. And these are all the ones that I'm gonna be getting rid of. All right, time to move on to the next bin. Okay, <laughs> moving on now to box number two. This is the official before. So starting off first with the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer. It is so frustrating for me when a foundation product claims to be on the hydrating side, claims to be good for dry skin, but then ends up being the complete opposite. I just don't understand. It doesn't make sense to me. This is another one of those more hydrating tinted moisturizers that just made my skin look so weird and chalky and just made it look the complete opposite of hydrated. So I really was not a fan of this at all. Definitely gonna be getting rid of it. So I have a Maybelline foundation here that I haven't yet tried out It's called the dream radiant liquid hydrating foundation with hyaluronic acid and to me that sounds like a dream Obviously, but my hopes aren't too high because obviously I have been disappointed One too many times with hyaluronic acid Foundations or foundations that claim to be super hydrating. So I am still going to keep one of these, I don't need both. I'm gonna get rid of the darker one in the shade Nude Beige, and I'm gonna keep the shade Creamy Natural um, so that I could try this out, obviously, and see if it actually lives up to its claims. I will let you guys know when I do. All right, let's talk super full coverage foundations. We have the Hourglass Vanish, the Stellar Foundation, L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear, and then the MAC Studio Fix Fluid. Let me just take a look here. I think the only foundation that I'm gonna keep here is the Hourglass Vanish. This is a very full coverage foundation. I mean, these are all very full coverage foundations. Hourglass Vanish though is like crazy full coverage. You need literally like, I'm not kidding, that much to cover your entire face. It's kind of insane. So if you're looking for a very full coverage product, this is quite there. This is a really great product, but because it is so full coverage, I do like to mix like serums with this or moisturizers to kind of like thin it out just a little bit. And then I find it's perfect. I do really like this, especially for like events and stuff. It's similar-ish to like the Estee Lauder Double Wear in that it's very dependable. And I am in the shade Ivory. This stellar foundation is actually so fantastic, but unfortunately it is very much inspired. I don't know if you guys can see, but the color of this stuff, like, I don't know what happened, but it turned gray. <laughs> don't, didn't even know that foundations can do that, but I've had this in my collection for a little bit too long, so I think it just kind of went bad, but I actually think I may repurchase this. This is just a really great full coverage foundation that still looked natural and didn't like accentuate my dryness. So gonna have to get rid of it, but I wish I didn't have to. I know a lot of people really love the L'Oreal 24 hour fresh wear, but for me, it's just like a little bit too heavy duty. Same thing goes with the MAC Studio Fluid, just a little bit too heavy duty for my liking. They're just not foundations that I ever really reach for. So I'm gonna be getting rid of both of these. So next I have my Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundations in the liquid form and the stick. The stick specifically was like my go-to foundation for literally everything, especially when I was a working makeup artist. I had these in so many different shades. I use them on so many different people. I just think it's probably one of the most like versatile foundations. I feel like it works so well on oily skin, on dry skin. It works well on more mature skin. If you want more coverage, if you want less coverage, just depending on how you apply it, you're able to get kind of a lot of looks out of it. You can literally just swipe this on your skin and get a full-on crazy amount of coverage or you can take a sponge just like lightly dab it into the stick and apply it that way and get something a little bit more lightweight however this has been in my collection for way too long it is absolutely expired and this actually fell out like the stick fell out right before I started filming this portion of the video. So I really feel like this is kind of at the end of its life. However, I will absolutely be repurchasing one of these. So I'm getting rid of it, but not totally by choice. <laughs> the Ultra HD is one of those foundations that I can always go back to and I always know it's gonna look good. Um, so I do think I'm going to keep it, but I don't need both shades. This shade actually really doesn't match me at all. It's a uh, Y218 and this one is Y245. So I'm gonna keep this because I do actually like this for when I'm a little bit more tan. This one's gonna go away though. 
This is a fun little product that I used to use when I was a working makeup artist. This is the Makeup Forever Chromatic Mix in number 11 and number 15. These are pretty much foundation mixers. So if I had a foundation that was a little bit too dark or a little bit too light, I can lighten it with the white or I can darken it with this dark brown color. And so if I was working on a client and I didn't have a foundation that matched them perfectly, if it was like a little bit too light or too dark, I can use these to adjust the foundation tone slightly to get it to match them perfectly. So these definitely came in in use when I was working as a makeup artist, but I never use them anymore and they're definitely very expired. I've had this in my collection for far too long, so I'm going to get rid of them. This over here is so expired. Look at that separation happening all up in this foundation that is not supposed to happen here. This is the La Mer, uh, what are you? the Soft Fluid Longwear Foundation. So I bought this when this was like the hot foundation that everybody was raving about, and I tried it so many times because of course I did, because it's a La Mer foundation and it was so expensive, and I could not get it to work. I just could not understand why everybody thought that this was like the best foundation ever because I just never found like it worked well with my skin. I don't really know if it was just me. Let me know if you guys have had a similar experience. And I just always found it to be like, okay, it was passable. Like it, it worked, but it wasn't incredible. Definitely, I felt not to be worth. It's very, very high price tag. So this is not a foundation that I really like and it is definitely expired as you can see. So I am going to get rid of it. So while I do really love the Laura Mercier Flawless Radiant Foundation, I'm not such a fan of the Flawless Fusion Foundation. They are different. They do give very different effects to the skin. I don't really quite remember why I don't like this, I think I just found it to be a little bit too heavy, but either way, I'm just gonna get rid of this guy. Next up, I have two of my Nude 6 foundations, the Tinted Blur Stick as well as the Tinted Cover. Now, if I had to choose between both of these, I would definitely go for the Tinted Cover. I feel like the, the, the Nudies Blur Stick is really good. I actually pretty much finished this guy. I have about that much left, so I obviously did really like it, but I feel like it is a little bit more of a finicky product. If you do have a drier skin type, you need to make sure that your skin is properly hydrated before applying this, otherwise it can look a little bit drying. It was actually a product that I used to throw on quite a bit when I went to the gym just to kind of feel more confident because it wasn't heavy at all. It just kind of covered up that little bit of redness that I wanted to cover up. So the Tinted Blur Stick I'm gonna get rid of because it's pretty much finished and I do know that I have a new one in my vanity right now. Um, and then I'm going to keep the Tinted Cover. The Smashbox Studio Skin is very, very similar to the Bobbi Brown uh, foundation that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. It's such a nice foundation. I feel like this is another one that's very, very underrated, but I like this because it lasts so well. Again, very similar to the Bobbi Brown one. It's also very hydrating, it's natural looking. I feel like I'm repeating the same words over and over again. Just know that I love it and it's good, so I'm going to be keeping this one. And this is in the shade 2.12. So these foundations over here are foundations that I don't really have very strong opinions on. So they're products that I've tried, but I don't love, but I also don't hate. They kind of just are okay, but they're foundations that I never reach for because of that. So I just don't feel like they're really worth keeping in my collection. And that is the Bare Minerals Bare Pro, the Anastasia Luminous Foundation, Becca Skin Love. This one I actually found to be really, really thick and kind of like sticky on the skin, which is why I remember not really loving it. Um, the Dior Forever Skin Glow, and then these MAC Stick Foundations. So I am going to be getting rid of all of these. The last foundation from the spin that I want to talk about is another one that I feel like is pretty underrated. It is from Cover FX. It's a natural finish, oil-free foundation. This is so good. Very natural looking foundation that has amazing coverage. And I feel like this is one that will work very well for all skin types because it isn't too dewy. It's not too matte. It's just right in the middle. So even if you have a very oily skin type or a very dry skin type, I feel like you'll be able to make this work for yourself. And that is all the foundations that I'm keeping from this bin. That was very, very successful. So now let me show you all the ones that I'm getting rid of. These are all going to Better Homes. Some of them, the trash, because they're expired, but most of them to Better Homes. All right, guys, we're almost done. Here's the last bin. There are some foundations in here, like the ColourPop Pretty Fresh that I have some extra shades in. So I'm just gonna kind of go through the ones that are doubles of foundations that we've already spoken about and go through the new ones. Believe it or not, I actually spoke about most of those that were already in there. There were a lot of doubles of like different shades and stuff. So I took all of those out and now we have all of these to talk about. So let's begin. Starting off first with my very first foundation love. This is the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. This one in particular,
Recycler is in the shade Sand. This is actually the Tinted Moisturizer in its old packaging. It has been repackaged and also reformulated. I do have the reformulated version in my vanity and it is still currently one of my favorite everyday most used foundations. It is a Tinted Moisturizer, so it's not gonna give you like a crazy amount of coverage, but it definitely gives you enough. I would say it's like a solid, solid medium coverage depending on how you apply it. I feel like I'm always gonna use this product and I'm absolutely keeping it. These are a lot newer and a lot less disgusting than the other Makeup Forever Stick that I had, so I'm definitely gonna be keeping these and I'm very happy that now I don't have to repurchase. This is the Cover FX Power Play Foundation. I have three shades here because I did receive these in a PR package, so that's why I have three shades. It's not because I love it so much that I got three shades. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of this foundation. I just feel like it's a very heavy formula that's kind of difficult to work with and I do so much more prefer the natural finish foundation from Cover FX, so I am going to uh, pass on these guys. So this guy is one of the weirdest products I've ever used. It is the Kosas Tinted Face Oil. And when I first saw this product, I thought it was going to be like the most amazing hydrating tinted moisturizer. I was very excited about it. But it is like one of the most liquidy foundations ever. Look at that. That's not the issue that I have with it. My issue with it is because it's such an oily texture, it like pretty much has no choice but to completely break up on your skin. You can literally see it as I'm trying to blend it down on the back of my hand that the pigment is separating from the oil. So it creates something really weird and blotchy and just super oily and messy and it just doesn't work. So this is a product that just really was a huge fail for me. It's probably one of my least liked foundations because of that. Here we have my Hourglass Vanish Foundation Sticks and the Illusion Tinted Moisturizer. This. I used to absolutely adore, but I've had this in my collection for far too long and it's definitely expired, so I am gonna get rid of it. The Hourglass Vanish Foundation Sticks are also really fantastic. They are definitely a little bit more coverage compared to the Makeup Forever ones, but they give you like the most flawless, flawless look. So I do really love these and I am gonna keep both of them. Sorry to be super vague once again, but these are some more foundations that I don't really have much of an opinion on. I actually did used to really love the Dior Forever foundation. It is still a really good one. I just feel like I have other foundations that I just like so much more now, so I just, you know, kind of forgot about it. And these guys, I have tried them before. I just don't really have any crazy thoughts about them. They're better off getting a new home. Then of course we have the original Fenty Pro Filter Foundation. I think I'm finally gonna get rid of this. I've been keeping it for such a long time. It's a very full coverage and matte product and it's just one of those foundations that I personally have to work with a lot to get it to work with my skin type. Like I have to use like six different serums and primers in order for it to just mesh well with my skin and then it looks really beautiful and it lasts a really long time and that is why I like it. But I just have other full coverage foundations that are in this realm that just work better for my skin that I don't have to work so hard for. And then lastly, I have the Bite Change Maker. This is a newer foundation in my collection. I actually do really love this. I use it quite a bit day to day. It's kind of like a step above a tinted moisturizer for me. It has a little bit more coverage, but it gives a very similar type of effect. It's very natural looking, very lightweight, very easy to wear, and I also love the shade. Again, shades make a big difference in me liking a foundation. This is L40 and it matches me really well. Wow, I can't believe I have one, two, three, four, five, six foundations from that huge pile. I actually think I could consolidate all of my foundations into one basket now, which is pretty impressive. Here are all the foundations that I'm going to be getting rid of. And when I say getting rid of, they are all gonna be getting better homes. Some of them are going to be going in the trash because they're expired, but most of them are just going to be getting some new owners. I'm so proud of myself. I think it's actually safe to say that I made my collection 80 to 90% smaller. By the way, a couple of my favorite foundations are actually living in my everyday vanity right now. So if you're wondering why a certain foundation wasn't here, that's probably where it is. All right, so now it's time to take a look at the finished product. This is what my new foundation drawer looks like. So much better, so much more organized, so proud. All right guys, that's it for my foundation declutter. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know all of your thoughts down below on any of the foundations that I spoke about today. And I would love to know what your current favorite foundation is right now. Let me know in the comments. Besides foundation, I hope all of you guys are doing well and staying safe. I love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.